Now that we've covered 3D TCAT, let's take a look at the next set of processing steps in our superscript. So remember, these hashtags are just for commenting purposes, and they usually tell you when there's a header for a new block of commands. In this case, something called outcount. What we're going to do here is we're going to check for any TRs or volumes which have a high fraction of voxels which are outliers. So how do we do this? First of all, we have this program called 3DT outcount. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a fraction of voxels within TR, which are a certain number of mean absolute deviations. So in that case, we might have a mean activity of 100 or so, let's just say, in a sample data set. And within one voxel, maybe the mean activity is 150. Now, if the mean absolute deviation that we calculate is, say, 10, that means that at that TR, we have an average of 5 median absolute deviations from the mean, right? So that's how 3D T out count is calculating, and usually something that's about 5.5 mean absolute deviations is considered an outlier. So auto mask, we're just focusing on a restricted set of voxels, and fraction, we're only looking at a fraction. So we're calculating a number between 0 and 1 as a percentage of how many voxels within that TR are indeed outliers. This Polord and Legendre, I don't know how you really pronounce that. I probably just pissed off a bunch of French people. I think it's French. I probably just offended even more people. But the point is, uh, you're going to be detrending the data according to how long the time series is. Right, so that accounts for any sort of drift, and so we're just removing that, and after we have that, we're then calculating how many mean absolute deviations the activity in that voxel is. We're using these 3D TCAT data sets, which had the first two TRs removed, and then we are taking the output of this command, which is really just text, and redirecting it to an, a file called outcount. R010203, remember this is a variable, dot 1D. Okay. And don't worry too much about this block of code. This is just giving an actual warning to standard output about how many uh, pre study state TRs there are, or something like that. Anyway, uh, this last command is actually going to concatenate all three of those different outlier text files into a single time series. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay. This is an ft.results. And if we look at outcount, dot RAL underscore RALL dot 1D. Okay, what you'll see here is at each time point, okay, so we've concatenated all three of them together, so there are 150, 150, 150, equals 450 individual time points. And at each one, we're seeing how many voxels are outliers. Most of these, it doesn't seem to be too big of a deal. If we scroll up, you might see some larger numbers like 0.03, so 3% of the voxels. Um, but it's really hard to just go through this. Oh, there's a big one, 0.44. Okay, so there might be something going on there. But to make this a little bit easier to look at, let's use a command called 1dplot and use outcount RALL. Okay. So you can see here there's time, there's a number of volumes on this x-axis. And there's a huge spike somewhere before 50 TRs, and it's about 45% of those voxels were outliers. So probably something like a huge head motion or just something weird happened, and we're going to have to take a closer look at that later. But to make this a little bit easier to center in or hone in on which volumes are outliers, we're going to use this command 1D eval. In this sorry ll.1D file. And we are going to use an expression, a mathematical expression, to 
look at a certain threshold. Okay, so any TRs which are greater than 0.05, let's say. In other words, let's only look at TRs which have more than 5% of the voxels as outliers. And we're going to use a script dash V command to only look at non-zero entries. That was a typo. Let me fix that. Okay. So at 42 and 266, there are a couple of outliers. Okay, so that's good to know. And we can actually see this a little bit more clearly. If we again use 1D plot, and we set a built-in threshold for that. So we have 450 time points, and we're also looking at a fraction like 0.05. Okay, you can make this any reasonable threshold that you want. Okay, so you can see, yeah, there's this threshold line right here at 0.05, and it cuts through these first couple of TRs. So specifically 42 and 266. If we look at these in AFNI, we are going to look at our TCAT volumes. And remember, open up this graph to see the time series. And let's see what is going on here. So remember, if we go back to the edge of the brain, this gives you a better sense of if there's any head motion contributing to a huge increase in signal, right? Uh, let's let's oops let's go to jump to x y z and use those same coordinates as we did yesterday. So nineteen point three seventy eight and negative five point seven. You recall that at time point. Let's see what was it forty. Two, which should be 43 because we started at zero, there is a significant head motion. Okay, remember we also had a significant outlier at time point 266. Now because all three of these are concatenated together and each one has, each run has 150 time points, that's 266 minus 150, 116, and add one because we start at zero. Okay, so this is actually going to be in run number two because we're above 150 times. And to save yourself some time, you can just go into this index thing right here. Okay, let's go a little bit closer to the edge of the brain. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see whether there's some motion, but there does indeed appear to be some at that time point. So these are just things you might want to look at. You'll get a feel for what looks questionable and what you might want to focus on later. Incidentally, there is a command you can feed into 3DD Convolve, which we'll get to in just a few tutorials, which you can actually set the threshold at which you want to censor or just ignore a certain volume. So let's say we wanted to ignore all TRs which had more than 5% of voxels past that mean absolute deviation threshold. We can do that with a command in 3DD Convolve, which we'll talk about later.